I have gotten inundated, you know how rarely I use that word, with requests for the Georgia Tech Mood Tracker. The Mood Tracker is simply us taking the temperature of a fan base, and it's time to do Georgia Tech football tonight. And so Georgia Tech, the Mood Tracker, points simply to one word, fire. Not in a crowded theater, but fire. You know the word that comes after ready and then aim. And in life, just like college football, there are seasons for all three. There's a season to ready yourself, and then there's a season to prepare and get ready and aim. And then, this is the most fun part, the one that you want to skip forward to, the fire season. That's what season it is right now at Georgia Tech. I cannot overstate how well Jeff Collins and his staff have handled the first two years on campus. They had a pandemic thrown at them like everyone else did, but they also had what I call a GU rebuild, a ground-up rebuild, that they inherited. I'm not speaking ill of Paul Johnson. Paul Johnson had some good years there. I don't care if Paul Johnson had won a championship the year before he stepped down. They were going to have to ground up rebuild because the fact of the matter is they weren't doing what Paul Johnson was doing. They didn't want to do that. So you can't overstate enough how well Jeff Collins and his crew have handled things because they stepped in and they really knew they had a two-front battle to fight. The first battle was internal, okay? That's rebuilding your roster, defining your critical factors. You got to cast a new vision for recruiting. You got to familiarize yourself with the Georgia high school recruiting scene and beyond. Like you got to build your infrastructure. You got to fill out your strength staff, your nutrition staff, your support staff. All that stuff's boring to you. You don't really care about that. That's the internal fight. Equally, if not more important though for Jeff Collins, and he knew this, was the external battle. The external battle was to work on selling Georgia Tech. And what they did brilliantly is they took Georgia Tech and they put it in this box and sealed it up and they shipped it all over the place. And on that box, there were three letters, ATL, and then there were three numbers, 404. They put Georgia Tech inside Atlanta, which geographically it had always been, but it hadn't been marketed that way. It had not been properly harnessed. And so they did that. And they also really had a collective emphasis on culture, all in, basically the stuff everyone preaches, but not everyone is about, they've been about that. And also what they did because of that is there's a lot of synergy in the messaging around Georgia Tech. Everyone says the same thing. Everyone sells the same thing. Everyone wears the same thing. They're right down to the Twitter bios for the coaching staff. It's all the same messaging. And you know what? A critical majority of that fan base has bought it. And here's the brilliance. They've been bad record-wise the first two years. They've won three games each of their first two seasons. You would think to yourself, this is the South. I don't care if it's the SEC or not. This is the South. They take football really seriously down here. You would think if you didn't know anything about Jeff Collins and the staff and you just saw the records, oh, man, hot seat this year, right? Oh, boy, I bet that fan base has been out of shape. They're not. They're not at all. And the reason is because Jeff Collins and his staff stepped in and understood we got a couple of years that are going to be tough. How do we keep the fans engaged? How do we keep the community engaged? And it's been full steam ahead, and this is a clinic in how to handle one of those ground-up rebuilds to the point where you've won six games total the first two years in, and yet you've still got really incredible passion. In fact, more passion and energy around that program than some others, even in their own conference, that have been better record-wise on the field than Georgia Tech has so far. But here's what fire really means. I mentioned the mood is fire. It doesn't mean everyone is bathing in the Kool-Aid and they're just blindly all in and they're buying that Georgia Tech's about to be a perennial double-digit win team. They still want to see results. There still may be some healthy skepticism. There's nothing wrong with that. This is a results-oriented business at the end of the day. Jeff Collins and his staff, they're big boys. They understand that. They get how this works. But there are basically, if you're kind of closer to that fan base, I was talking back and forth with some of you this week, there are these three little subgroups, really, that I've narrowed it down to uh, that make up the Georgia Tech fan base. Subgroup one, I think this is a pretty small subgroup, but subgroup one is a group that really was married to the old school way of doing things. They liked Paul Johnson. This group also does not believe that Georgia Tech has what it takes to seriously compete for ACC championships and you know push for a college football playoff conversation entry at least they don't believe that i dismiss that crowd because i philosophically disagree with that and i think that's a small subgroup subgroup two is totally opposite subgroup two is all in they love everything about jeff collins they love the energy he's brought they love the branding they love the passion they think he's doing it the way they always wanted it to be done they want results but they're all in and they've bought into the vision and they have the patience and then there's group three i think there's a healthy chunk of the georgia tech fan base that is a blend of they liked Paul Johnson. There was a lot to like about him. They respected him. They, they appreciated him. But yet they also knew it was time for something new. And when Jeff Collins came in, they fully embraced him. Okay, It's about as 
antithetical a way of doing things as possible, but yet both can work, and they've embraced it. But now, so three years in, they would sit back and they'd say, love Jeff, love him, but we want to see results, and that's fine. It's fire season. You've had the ready season. You've had the aim season. Now you get the fire season. You look around and you think, huh, we've got a quarterback returning finally. I haven't been able to say that around here in a couple of years. Well, now we've got a roster that three years in and beyond, it should reflect a lot more of the thumbprint of the coaching staff and the head coach that's running things here. So you had a two-front battle you had to fight when you got there. The internal, the rewiring of the program, Jeff Collins and his staff have handled that behind the scenes, and ultimately the results on the field will bear out how good a job that they've done there. But the external fight, the second front they've had to fight, it's been brilliantly waged, and they've gotten people even more on board. They've gotten the fan base even more engaged, winning three games a year the first two seasons, than a lot of other programs out there have winning far more, but not having that engagement. So all I want to tell you, as I've told you for a couple of years now, ever since the Collins staff arrived in Atlanta, I am a firm believer in the direction of this program. And what's going to happen is it's going to seem to you like they're having success all of a sudden. It's not all of a sudden. It's happening when they're winning three games a year. You just don't see the root taking place. Now, they had to, they didn't have to just trim the hedges. They had to completely salt the earth and they had to torch it and build from the ground up. And it takes a little while. But once that culture takes root and you got a good coaching staff over there, uh, they got, I think, a very good recruiting plan. I believe you can recruit to Georgia Tech at a level that makes you competitive with the big boys in college football. Some don't. We disagree there. Fire. That's what the mood is around Georgia Tech circles right now. And I endorse that because I feel the exact same way.